The longest lived individual in human history is, uh, was 122 years. Uh, and that was about 20 years ago. What's been our new breakthroughs in uh, life extension? None. However, there is a great potentiality of living better, and that's by increasing one's health span. everyone and welcome back to the Wellness Zone podcast. I'm Mary Perry and I'm here with the creator of the Zone Diet and Metabolic Engineering, Dr. Barry Sears. So today we're going to dive into a topic that sounds straight out of science fiction, um, expanding the human lifespan. So Dr. Sears, health span is something that you and I have talked about in terms of wellness minus your years of disability, but expanding the lifespan is, uh, is definitely a new topic for us. So what are your thoughts on whether we can actually expand um, the average life expectancy? Is the science really there to support it? I'll summarize it in two words, <laughs> slim and none. All right. Now, uh, I say, what, what about all the anti-aging breakthroughs we're hearing about? I say, I'm still waiting. And a new article came out in Nature uh, entitled, The Implausibility of Radical Life Extension in Humans in the 21st Century. I say, wait a minute, I was told that basically I could live forever. <laughs> you were lied to. Now, why is that? We've done all of our great breakthroughs in terms of extending life. Again, in terms of uh, childhood mortality mm -hmm. and antibiotics. Yeah. And now we're basically back to the, the really long-term indicator of your mortality when you will die. And that is basically biological aging. And we really have not done much to basically change that maximum level. But on the other hand, we have done a great deal of insights in how to extend health span, which is a very different aspect we've talked about before. Now, Dr. Sears, one of the things that's kind of come up in this topic of, you know, aging and extending life is, is blue zones. So can you talk a little bit about that too? Well, uh, this was a little before your time, but when yogurt was first introduced in America, they had pictures of uh, old Bulgarians eating yogurt on the mountains and say, they lived to be 180 years. Well, I say, no, they don't, because they had no legitimate birth records. And we talk about the blue zone, say, they lived to be 100. Do you have any legitimate birth records? No, but they, they say they were born, you know, two centuries ago. So again, we had to take all of this existing aspect of basically longevity without basically documentation with a grain of salt. And even with the documentation, the longest lived individual in human history is, uh, was 122 years. Uh, and that was about 20 years ago. What's been our new breakthroughs in uh, life extension? None. So again, until we have legitimate birth records, we can't say basically people are living longer uh, than they, and we'll basically see an increase. However, there is a great potentiality of living better, and that's by increasing one's health span. Okay, so really our goal shouldn't be extending the number of years we live, but making sure that those years that we are living are the healthiest they can be. Agreed, and from that respect, the United States is doing a pathetic job Yes. <laughs> uh, if we define health span as really the percentage of your life lived in relatively good health, the number one place in the world to be living is not a blue zone, but Singapore. Mm -hmm. Now, of Singapore, it gets hot in the summer. It's way out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so a little closer to home. How about Italy? They're number 10. Not a bad place to hang out. What about the United States? It's number 66. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, our health span has been decreasing since the year 2010. Mm -hmm. They say, why are we spending all this money if our health span is decreasing? Good question. Because we are missing the point. They're saying we're spending money on medical technology, but the primary determinant of living longer and living better is through your diet. That makes complete sense. So, all right, Dr. Sears, so break down what do we need to do with our diet to really extend our health span? The most important thing you do is restrict calories. I said, oh, no, don't you have a magic pill? No, <laughs> you had to restrict calories. But I'll always be hungry. That's a problem. There's two potential, three potential solutions. One, gastric bypass surgery. It's brutal, but it works. Option two, weight loss drugs like Ozempic. 
Take the injection once a week, and basically you won't be hungry. But there's option three. Option three, which I developed back in uh, the early 1990s, the zone diet. The zone diet is a calorie-restricted diet, but designed to be a diet without hunger and without fatigue. How is that possible? Well, let's look at first without fatigue. It's designed to basically and been clinically tested to stabilize blood sugar levels. If blood sugar levels are stable, basically you have no fatigue. Now, what about hunger? Basically, the zone diet is also balanced to basically stop hunger signals. Now, when I first published the zone diet 30 years ago, I say, oh, I don't get it. But now that's exactly how drugs like Ozempic work. They're not magical drugs. They simply tell the brain to stop eating. And therefore, you tend to restrict your calories by about 30%. And when you do, all these magical things happen. Now, is it because of Ozempic? No, you're stopping the hunger. So you have three choices to restrict calories. Gastric bypass surgery, taking Ozempic the rest of your life, or following the zone diet the rest of your life. Hey, Dr. Sears, could you explain, so uh, intermittent fasting is also based on calorie restriction, but can you talk about briefly why going with a zone diet and metabolic engineering is, is superior than using intermittent fasting as a way to restrict calories? Well, intermittent fasting says I'm just basically eating less time, spending less time eating. And I hope, and I hope I restrict calories. But people say, oh, I'm eating two meals per day. I better eat bigger meals. I might get hungry during the night. So the amount of calorie restriction may be somewhat uh, uh, mitigated. Mm -hmm. But it's not just restricting calories. It's restricting calories and balancing protein, carbohydrate, and fat to give rise to the appropriate hormonal response in the blood that then signals to our cells to change their metabolic response. Mm -hmm. So if you're eating a bad diet, uh, restricting calories will basically say, I'll restrict calories, but I'm still eating a bad diet. But the zone diet is basically based upon hormonal control, which translates into metabolic control. And just, just to kind of rephrase that a little bit, Dr. Sears, and I think that's the important thing because with intermittent fasting, you can have these meals where you have larger quantities of calories, but you don't, you won't get AMPK activation at that meal because you've overconsumed. So that's really why you need that balance at each and every meal. And really the, the ability of the diet to control hormones will last about five hours, which means uh, during the time of sunlight, you want to eat about three meals a day. What's the most important meal? Breakfast. Right. Okay. Then five hours later, you eat lunch. And five hours after lunch and before the sun goes down, you eat dinner. And then you stop. But if you've done it right, you've done it correctly by balancing protein, carbohydrate, and fat. And it's not that difficult. What you have done is to basically stabilize your hormones and stabilize metabolism. And by doing that, now you activate AMPK. That's the secret for life extension. That's the secret for living a longer, healthier life, to activate the master switch metabolism while the sun is up. And basically, when the sun goes down, that's when the body is now using resources to basically rebuild damaged tissue from the early part of the day. Mm -hmm. These things have not changed for, you know, two, last 200 million years, and they won't change tomorrow. And, and Dr. Sears, there's a greater impact in, you know, it's not just at the individual level of extending health span. It, you know, it really impacts the, the, you know, the economy and everything else. So do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, the extensions of um, increasing health span? Well, first and foremost, about 24% of the U.S. Uh, you know, economy is based upon treating basically disease. Mm -hmm. If you live longer, and it's not really living longer, living better, you have less disease, and therefore that amount of money is can be translated to other parts of our economy. So from the global aspect, you basically live longer, you live better, and basically you're more productive during your, during your entire lifespan. That is the, the key for health span, maximum productivity, because you're now getting maximum metabolic efficiency. Whoever controls metabolism controls the future of medicine. Excellent. Well, Dr. Sears, thanks so much for enlightening us on HealthSpan and the actions that we can take today to do it. And uh, hopefully we will boost our numbers in the U.S. here and, and get off in the, the 60s and closer to, you know, Italy and uh, Singapore. <laughs> well, again, it, it's well within the possibility. It just it, do we have the will.
And that's why we developed the concept of metabolic engineering, a more comprehensive program. Yes, the zone diet is part of it, but only part. Because there's uh, two other components, adequate levels of omega-3 fatty acids and adequate levels of polyphenols. And when they all combine, they tend to activate AMPK in a synergistic manner, which allows you to say, I'm well my pathway to basically extending my health span. And what's the benefits to me? Everything. A longer life, a better life, and basically one that's more productive for everyone. And who doesn't want that? So, of Dr. course. <laughs> Dr. Sears, if people want to learn more about metabolic engineering, where should they go? I would recommend them going to drsears.com. The field is constantly changing, and it is complex. And our job at drsears.com is to basically take that complexity and make it understandable and usable in terms of daily actions that can extend your health span. And that's the real goal of medicine in the 21st century.